Pew. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Twanicles Vlog. I just wanted to say thanks for the support, thanks to my sponsors, thank everyone who helps me out. It's been awesome. Um, a lot of good feedback on the last episode about the board review. Everyone seems stoked on it. I uh, got a lot of cool questions, inquiries, requests, different things. And I think that brought me to um, what I want to do. I want to make a how-to sup series. And really touch on some different things. I know there's all kinds of different things on the internet telling you what to do and what you should do. Um, this is surfing, so it's gonna be a surfing focused how-to series. Um, that being said, like uh, when I do an edit, I don't include any type of paddling into the waves most of the time, unless it's like a late drop or something critical, just to keep it short, get you amped to go surf, and I wanna have it be an entertainment type thing, uh, not long drawn out each wave. So that being said, I'm going to take some of those clips where, you know, I'm paddling in the wave, some late drops, put those all together, and that brings me to my first how-to video. And we'll do some how-to drop in late and get in your stance, and that's the new video. So I think it'd be a good idea to show something like that, um, a little bit alternative than just a basic how-to video, get it super specific, and hopefully it'll help you out. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. How to sub and drop in late. Everyone sees surfing differently, whether it's a different perspective, different variety of turns, or even what person thinks which waves are good. It's your idea, your wave, your canvas. But there's definitely a few tricks here and there to make it a little bit more seamless, make it more interesting for yourself, and give you that extra bit of flow. So I'm gonna run through this how-to just like I would with any one of my surf coaching lessons. When I do a one-on-one -on -one lesson, no matter what level they're at, I try to focus on one specific thing for them to work on. Give them some key points to focus on and then apply that all at once to every single wave. So we're gonna run through these clips and I'm gonna talk us through some notable points of each wave. My goal with this is to present you with some new ideas so you can go out, take this approach and make it your own. Now something to note, this is not a step-by-step -step how to where each step builds on the next. I'm gonna highlight four focus points for sticking these late drops. Each point should become a flowing subconscious action that you do at once. So let's get into it. So as I was saying, this is not a step-by-step -step how to. This is a all or nothing approach. You need to take all these four focus points and incorporate it into a subconscious action. Now the first point is gonna be a modified paddling stance, which means Get out of your parallel stance of paddling and into a full surf stance or a semi-staggered surf stance to get you quick and into your stance position for a late drop. Now second would be keeping that paddle on your toe side. You don't have to fumble with the paddle or anything like that, you're ready to go. Both of those moves can lead to fumbling at the top of a wave and missing a wave, something we all see. Now most importantly is keeping your eyes on the prize. Focus to where you want to go. Look down the line, look at the bottom of the wave, look at the lip line, look where the wave is breaking. Don't look at your board, don't look at your paddle, focus on where you want to go. And commit. 100% commitment is the most important part of all this. Do not hesitate. Hesitation, you will fall. Everyone falls from hesitating. Okay, so first clip here, you can see I'm already looking at the wave and where I'm going to go. Looking at the wave, monitoring where I'm going, looking at the transition, looking straight in front of me the transition, and down the line. And that one I kept the paddle on my toe side the entire time. Worked out for that turn to fun little wave. Um, so you can see on this next one too, same deal. Coming over the first wave, looking exactly where I'm going to go. I'm going to hold looking at the wave this entire time. It's a bigger set wave, and the best part about surfing a backside, a right, or a left, when you're coming at it backside, you're facing it the whole time, so you're always able to keep your eyes on the wave. Gives you that bit of an advantage, too, of knowing what's going to happen early, and gets you going down the line quick. Now, same with this one, kept the paddle on my toe side the whole entire time. And man, that would have been a sick combo. So these next two clips are going to be exactly why keeping your paddle on your heel side isn't going to work with dropping in, or dropping in late. So you can see I'm already a little off balance, kind of a wobble, took me hard to get speed, and then I was late getting to the lip here. Could have been up there, could have got an air off. Sure it was a good turn, but not proper. Now the same thing going the other way, off balance, 
looking at my board, not looking down the line at first, and then trying to keep doing weird paddle switches when I could have just hit the lip with my paddle on my toe side. And then, of course, trying way too hard. Whenever I'm not standing paddling on my feet, I'm paddling on my belly in the prone position. I want to pop up when I get up to speed straight to my feet. No knee paddling or any of that Pocahontas move, as we'll call it. I don't recommend doing that. It's bad for the circulation in your knees and your ankles. It's best to prone paddle and get your feet up. You can see here I'm paddling with my paddle on my heel side, which I'm not recommending, but this was a slow entrance wave. One of the reasons we all started stand-up paddling. I think stand-up paddling is so fun, it's just a different way for everyone to take a different approach to shortboarding, longboarding, whatever your initial way you learned is. So now here, it's gonna be a backside wave, it's facing it the entire time, always looking at my target. Now I'm looking down the line, looking in front of me, always facing where I'm going. Saw that backwash coming and was able to navigate it. And the wave didn't turn out I wanted, but it worked. Here you can see I dropped in in the foam. I was square and ready for it. I knew what was coming and I was looking at it the whole entire time. Now, surfing in the crowd, you gotta be ready for a late drop. You gotta be ready for someone to miss, jump on top of it, and get going whenever the opportunity comes. Now you can see it's just screwing off there, but what else is new? Now here, I was in my stance, ready, and that guy randomly goes right for whatever reason, gives me the left, and I was able to capitalize and get a good little wave. But, you know, of course, I'm a little too much of a protectionist, and I was pissed with that. Now this day, very busy, but the waves were good. And of course this guy's trying to block me, so I'm going right around him. Um, but yeah, some days when the waves are good and you, when you know you're in the right of way, you just gotta go. Um, I know surfing in crowds and surfing to stand up around people is tough. Um, you know, finding a different spot with people with not around may not be even available to some people. So just do what it can, be polite, but you know, take what's yours too. We're all there to serve and have fun. You can see that was a super late drop. We're well, just feeling it this day. The waves were good, sunny, um, in trunks. Just one of those days where you just feel loose and like you can kind of just do everything. Um, we'll drop that, we'll replay that drop again at the end of this one. Same with this one too. Paddle on my toe side. I'm in my staggered stance. I was ready to go. Took a good whip. I was always watching. And now I'm just watching the wave and get to enjoy the ride now. And same thing, get to keep my paddle on my front side at the beginning, and then I can do a paddle switch and loosen it up. But at the beginning, here's another wave. It even looked like that wave. But same thing, having the paddle on my toe side, I was able to really stabilize through that drop. Um, that was just a great one for it too. Great example of a late drop on that one. And just always the toe side, front side paddle is just the place to be. Now this one too, and that one you can see I just knew there wasn't going to be much wave but just had to go for it just because you're in the rhythm. And again, toe side and super ollie. Now that one I just knew I wasn't going to make the wave but like I said a really good day and just absolutely feeling it. So here's that clip I said I would replay but in slow motion. You can see I'm in my surf stance, my paddle's on my toe side, and I'm looking where I'm going. You can see I even took that extra paddle to get speed to get down the wave. That's just from situational awareness and doing it over and over. Here you go again, extra paddle, even the wave was breaking, just to get that speed. Now I'm in my surf stance, you can see I was fully compressed and ready for whatever was going to happen. Now that size wave is a perfect size wave I recommend for trying this. In smaller surf, you're always going to want to match or beat the speed of the wave when dropping in. Just because there could be a little bit gutless and you want to get that extra bit of speed to be able to do some more turns, maneuvers, and you know, even at higher speeds, it's easier to balance. Slow speed is tough, and I'm sure everyone on a lower volume board is feeling that when paddling. It's tough to get going when the board is slow. Now this one, quick whip, paddle on my toe side, and I was looking where I was going the entire time. And that leads me to really plan out my entire wave and tap into the natural rhythm of the wave. And that's why we're all doing this with the paddle boarding too. It's giving us an opportunity to tap into the rhythm of the wave from a different approach. Now this next one is going to be a slightly what not to do, but I've still made it work. Have the paddle on my heel side as you can see, instead of having it on my toe side. And it's going to lead to an unnecessary switch at a sketchy time. So there I'm in my stance, and I'm switching right as the white water was bonking me. Instead of having a firm grip or speed, I'm putting the whole thing in jeopardy by doing that. 
but I was feeling pretty confident, as you can see, and ollieing down the face. Uh, remember, this was a really good session. It got pretty crowded, and I ended up leaving and paddling down the beach and getting this next wave. That's just the best part about stand-up, too. You can just change spots in one second, and look, I go from getting a perfect point break to pulling into this awesome barrel. And this was the same thing, too. I was looking down the line and knew exactly where I wanted to go and where I needed to be. Um, and that's a cool part about stand-up. You get that extra bird's eye view, and you get to claim it for the boys, too. Now here's another one, late drop, facing the wave, pal on the inside, really looking where I'm going, but forcing myself to get down the face in the offshore wind. Stand-up paddle is kind of like a wing in offshore, so you're always going to have a little bit of extra trouble trying to get going down the face of the wave. See the waves are pretty offshore and clean this day, and there I was really just forcing it and feeling it and get down the face. Sometimes, you know, we are when you are in a crowded lineup with other surfers, they're not going to give you a chance, uh, you're not always going to have the opportunities you want, so you just got to take whatever comes your way. Um, this one, especially slow-mo, I was paddling sideways in my stance trying to get going and just to get some sort of speed going before the wave hits me so I could at least match the speed of that lip. And that whole time I was in my surf stance so I didn't have to fuddle around or do anything. And right as I came out of it, in my stance ready to do a top turn. Wave didn't turn out the same, but it worked well. This one too, in my stance, and right away I'm able to hook in and potentially get barreled down the line right there. Um, same thing, having a wide stance and, you know, being on a stand-up, we're standing already. So you got to take advantage of being standing already. Now, last clip of this whole how-to right here, here's it going to be. Offshore day, nice and clean, paddling out, paddles on my inside, I'm in a staggered stance, put my foot back for a bigger stance, I'm in my full stance, one adjustment, and there we go, down the line. And stand-up is just my favorite way to surf. Shortboarding is awesome, but stand-up is... A cool way to ride waves that are not absolutely perfect. These waves are mushy, but still at the same time barreling and you get a chance like that. Okay, so that was my first How To Sup episode um, and the first installment of the How To Sup series. I hope I presented some new information for you. I hope it was clear and concise. And most of all, I hope it helps you step up your game. Um, let me know what you think, what videos you want to see, what moves you want to see, and any How To specifics. I'd be more than welcome to make any videos and taking special requests. Um, this video is for a couple people specifically too, so hopefully they see it and are stoked and brings you to the next level. Um, hit the subscribe button. I'm going to be making a couple more of these how-to videos this month, so hopefully it gets your game going for this summer. I know the forecast is really good right now. Uh, it's even pumping right now. So get out there, push yourself to the next level, and drop in late. Chew! Stony.